So hello, welcome back to WSOPC Tallinn. I'm joined by the 555 winner, Phil Gross. How are you, sir? Hi. A little bit sleepy still. It's hard to catch up. Yeah, sure. But uh, some big emotions and, and a big breakthrough for you uh, this week after coming just short in a previous event. I believe you got second or third, was it, in 2023 for 77k? It was second place at the Kings of Tallinn. That's right, and now first for 55, and we've got a couple of hands to talk through, if you don't mind. Sure. Let's have a look. So this was one of the Ooh, key Hello moments there. here. He's so David the under the gun blind, opens sorry. with 6.5 suited, a little bit wide, but blind. you uh, so decide really to jam here because this was about was one or two orbits the into the final the table, and I believe that you'd lost half your stack. So you'd sort of received a little bit of resistance and and wasn't really going all that well. So... Talk us through the emotions here when you see that you do eventually run into the ace king and the big blind, and it must have been um, so gut wrenching to think, oh, am I just out now? Or? <laughs> yeah, it's it's poker. This is what happens, and you have to uh, face the situations, and you have to deal with the fact that you can be eliminated at any time. Yeah, you can't avoid it. You can't prevent. It. You can try to avoid it, but then you will eventually blind out. Well, that's and the opposite of your game plan. Right? Exactly, that's exactly. What we saw you, you wanted to put the pressure on, and I, I feel like your game plan is to go for the, the top three places and for the win. <laughs> or bust. Yeah, for exactly. The win. For, for the win. win. I want for sure. Yeah, and uh, that was something that we saw, and this was a pretty fortuitous run out. What do you think of David? Do you think he was generally considering uh, the 6 5 here? Because he was in this three way situation, and it seemed like he wanted to put you both on Ace King. It would have been quite. Uh, Quite a memorable yeah, spot if he'd uh, so flicked nice. in the call there. Well, looking looking at the equity, yes, obviously not the very worst decision, right? Yeah. So a lot of people would say, ah, how can you do it with six five? But if you actually look at the equity, he's much in much better shape than I am. Yeah. Yeah. And people say ace queen is a no brainer there. King queen, okay. Of course, most people who play after ice up, uh, who follow ICM, uh, wouldn't consider this a necessary push even with ace queen. I don't even know. Yeah, potentially. What versus it's, under the gun? It, yeah, seven-handed. Uh, it's really, really marginal. Yeah. Um, but that's not something or a philosophy that you subscribe to. No, 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 no. My my, my total idea was it's a lot of it's a lot of of, of things that I uh, uh, process mm -hmm. in a, in a hand like this. Mainly in this situation, I was tracking the stacks yep. who might be out next what's the situation if i win the hand what's the situation if i lose the hand okay if i lose obviously i'm out Absolutely easy <laughs> yeah no problem so uh, that's okay that's okay um the production crew here as you cannot uh, expect to win every tournament obviously no and but what 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 i was mainly focused on yeah. if i win the hand then i have my stack I have the, the, the right stack sizes in the right positions behind me and I can literally try to distribute the stacks of them and dictate them what they can actually do. And okay. by, 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 by showing some loose calls as well, I, I, I prove to the table, don't try to push me. Yeah. Don't try to push and me. And people were even more repellent towards doing exactly that. Exactly. And for just for this, it's totally worth it, in my opinion, because when, the, when, when we are just three, four players on the table, you are in the big blind every three or four hands, right? Yes. So the big you blind ante is 33 or 25%, Which is right? huge, which is huge. Yeah. I... I People have uh, some charts in their mind and they only consider single big blind because this is the standard that used to be evaluated yeah. and uh, calculated. And this double big blind ante changes the... Uh, Absolutely. It's something I've mentioned so many times on the commentary. You see this kind of passive style as if it were 0.1, 10% but that's not how it works now. We're playing 33, so 25 and we've seen yours and also Linda Nguyen in the women's, the two players that really just took the final table by the scruff of the neck and uh, and that plays off well. So let's go into the next hand. Mm -hmm. uh, he hasn't had much to work with. And here we've got the three hand so you've got a uh, 10 9 suited i believe in the small blind and this is kind of what you're alluding to right <laughs> you don't mind taking a bit of a gamble here 
because even if you double up Alexi in this spot, right, he gets to 5.8 or 6 or something, you're going to be still with almost double his stack. So you're still just going to be able to shove him out of the game eventually, right? Well, there are a lot of things that happened before the hand, like in the in the previous three, four hands. Like I said, I distribute, I try to control the stacks behind me and I try to make sure that I'm in the position where I want to be and where I can benefit fit the most from the game that I plan to play. Yeah. And uh, in this situation, even if he doubles up, yeah, I have the... Uh, what was his name? Ruby, the Estonian guy behind me. Yes, I have him behind me with such a short stack. Um, and I, since, he's, since he's straight behind me, that's what I mean with distribute the stacks and make sure who has what stacks. Since he's the super short stack, I can literally keep him on lifeline and keep pressuring uh, Alexi in the, in the, in the big blind. Because he's on your direct left and Alexi's not going to take many open spots or he's just going to fall to you, so you do the work for him, right? But then you can counter that by saying, actually, no, Alexi, I'm going to keep this shorty in the game and come after you because exactly, you're the exactly, one that, exactly, that really yeah, needs yeah, second yeah. more exactly, in this situation. Exactly. And you keep the pressure and you try to Phil is get so into the, you try to get into the heads up wow, with the best possible stack. Yeah. Yeah. So. so would you call with 10-9 now, um, having yeah, considered that? Any information. Huh? Considered what I just said? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Well, the Especially 10-9. Like, so people think king-queen is better, ace-queen is better. You are more often dominated. dominated like 10-9 yeah. is life. Yeah, yeah. Unless there is an overpair, 10-9 is a hand really hard to dominate there in this in, in this kind of spot and my thoughts were really I was really just confused and just trying to process what kind of hand he shoves there because I think you can think about my call what you want but I think the shove for someone who tries to follow ICM is yeah, it's super loose super I was loose. I was surprised as well because yeah Rupe has less than one big blind and you could see I think he realized his mistake Alexi there as well he maybe got caught in the moment a little bit because what benefit does it have for him to pick up two blinds nothing like, nothing, right? Nothing. Yeah. Literally nothing. And this was as well. I felt like you have to punish this mm -hmm. to make sure he won't. Uh, he won't do it again. So don't don't <laughs> play stupid games with me because yeah. I invented stupid games. <laughs> and that was the theme of your final table performance as well. There was a bit of bravado and showmanship. And are you playing a, a kind of a role in order to get inside the head of your opponents in some ways? I'm enjoying the show. No. Let's hope that I really just have fun playing poker. Yeah. I really enjoy playing poker, and I have fun. At, uh, doing it and and that's enough for you that's yeah. enough for me that's yeah. enough for me yeah and i think if i would be like sitting there <laughs> some of it yes yeah this was on point yeah that was funny um if i would be sitting there trying to calculate icm and try to catch the next hundred euro i would not enjoy it at all and would yeah. question really why i'm here exactly just kind of dribbling out of the tournament so let's have a look at the next one Tournament as well. And here we have in the heads up match. A lot of people in that one as well. Everyone's really thirsty for the bounties here, aren't yeah. they? It's just a carnival atmosphere in those bounties. Alexi limps yeah, with the king six. King six. What about Phil? Let's see. Ten four suited. And here's the the magical ten four suited hand. So, do you do any kind of raising with uh, with this? With this kind of stack depth match, like an ISO here, you can maybe get him to fold some dominated offsuit 10x and things like that from time to time. I want to keep the pot small on those speculate defense in this situation. Like you, mm -hmm. if you look at the blinds. Yeah, it's 16 effective, right? So we have 1.5 million minimum in every pot from the beginning. That's literally yeah. 15, 16, 17 percent of each stack. Uh, so each little pot here counts so much and I don't want to take the risk. Okay. There was another hand, you saw probably 5-5, five, five, where I really hesitated to make the call. Yeah, you didn't want to. And he had 6-4, right? Uh, yeah. And in, the, in this spot, so we've spoken about this privately, but you're thinking that Alexi very rarely stabs the flop with any 9x, right? Or he could have some random 9x, but what you said to me was quite interesting. You said that you didn't feel like he was going to really make a bet call here with one pair. And, and your decision was to, to, to punish the sizing because you felt like he was going to be betting a lot of 6x. So talk us through that. 
Yeah, first, I, what, what really drove me off here and... Uh, this end I planned kind of to play check call down. Mm -hmm. Check call down, but the bet sizing he put on here was so aggressive and the pot suddenly blew up so much. He basically tries to confront me and I sense he's under pressure. He doesn't like his hand too much maybe. Yeah. And he wants to bring it to an end here and not see another card. You perceived it as like he's going to size up the turn to scare you and then check back the river straight away. Either that or in he wishes I fold actually that's yeah. uh, that that was the impression that i got there okay and i thought i either i either am up against the bluff which is most likely two higher cards mm -hmm. which i do not want to see another card no. so all in is a good yeah, that's thing here 12 percent equity just denied right yes straight out yeah and i really thought if he has the six or the nine maybe even with a weak kicker he doesn't seem to be in the mood to call it and so is that Finish your it. intuition or yes, some kind yes, of energy yes. field it's, sense? It's intuition. It's yeah. intuition. You, you <laughs> yeah, it's, it, a, it's, it's a lot of things that come together. Like yeah, that you don't even necessarily know consciously. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a mask I, in the I, 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 try to, I try to think about them really consciously. Yeah. Because, like I said, I go through the, all, those, uh, all those little things. Like what happened in the, in the hands before? What is his mood right now? How is he feeling? And this is the perfect example right now because after this hand, He's yeah. not feeling too well. Yeah, and you we can see it in his face when the when I flip uh, over the, the the bluff, basically. Yeah, which was not hundred percent the bluff in my mind. It was fifty percent. I protect my hand. Fifty percent. I go for the bluff. Yeah, and if maybe he has can diamonds get off. or something. He has to bet exactly. fold or bet call or make some awkward decision. So then we're going to see what happens yeah, after, yeah, as. Uh, it feels like you're in his head at this point, and uh, he's made a very annoying lay down there with the six. Uh, did you speak about your hand? Did you tell him that a six was good? Uh, was there any kind of... I, I, I turned it over. You like, turned it over, I turned, yeah. I turned over my bluff, yeah. Yeah, so he's he's pretty steaming right now. And now we have ace-king off-suit. Yes. And uh, I think he's got about five million or less at this point. I think a little bit more, like six. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so twelve. I, I I remember I was sitting there at the end of the at the end of the hand, and I wasn't even sure if if it's over. Yeah. Gross. What about? Yeah. So he's got yeah five point six plus yeah. the uh, big the big blind ante that's yeah. gone in. So. I was obviously considering to to limp or to to min race, mm -hmm. but uh, considering the the double big blind uh, ante, it's perfectly fine to take this pot down already. It costs him so much. He loses one million in chips of his 6.6. .6. Uh, I don't make a big show. I just shove and I hope he gets convinced to call. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That's like the uh, Scotty Nguyen. If you call us all, all over, over, baby. baby yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, we've got and you've had your own little catchphrase here and you're, you're yeah. talking to him and you, you're, you're sensing that uh, he is frustrated at this point, right? He is frustrated. He basically could have gotten me just by saying call. He takes the, he takes the ring and he goes home. But instead he keeps bringing himself in complicated situation. And I remember before, before the Stop started. Um, we wanted to. He wanted to negotiate the deal, and my offer didn't. Uh, he didn't like it too much. Okay. And then he he decided no. Let's play. Let's play. I'm a really really good heads up player. <laughs> and for me, all the time, my focus was and my memories were of the king. Were at the Kings of Talents event last year, where I entered the heads up. I think with 80 percent of the trips. Okay. And end up losing it, and I was devastated yeah like, i feel terrible everyone came and hey congratulations so much money well but done and i was right like then, right? i lost i lost yeah. i lost mm -hmm. and so you wanted to avenge that and and here's the emotion letting it out there you you played such a, a strong game and you had such a uh, an interesting table presence with your chat and also the charisma that was on show so now, big stack in the mystery bounty. That's coming up in uh, around about half an hour local time. Mm -hmm. How many chips do you have and uh, how many left? 500,000 chips and we just bursted the bubble yesterday. Fantastic. Uh, I think 20, yeah, 27 players are in now. And this tournament will be much tougher than, yeah. than the first one. For many reasons, for many reasons. Yeah, lots of uh, high-level pros, but also Mystery Bounty, based on the style that we saw you bring to the final table, that I think that suits you as a format. 
Because you do have to uh, be fearless in that and, and go for it, right? Mm, on, on one side, yes. But on the other side, if you are too fearless and just keep the foot on the pedal all the time here, the money drums are not that uh, serious and people are more interested in getting a stack to bust other stacks. Yeah. So they are not really looking for the bunny drums and there is actually not a serious money jump at all. I think it goes in the hundreds and then in the two, three hundred steps. If you pay 1,100 euro buy-in, you don't really care about two, three hundred. I guess none of the players there really is looking for those drums. And I think this time I have more competition for the first place. Okay, well, we'll think, keep our fingers crossed for you. And thanks for joining us in the booth. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you very much. Cheers, Phil.